but just you know, sometimes these storms are physical in nature. Some, you know, a couple of years ago we had Hurricane Dorian that, that devastated uh, the Bahamas. You know, a number of people uh, were were injured or killed by these these hurricanes because it was a Category Five storm that basically hovered under over the Bahamas for a couple of days. And the Bahamas are not there's not big mountains or places to take refuge. It's very flat and very close to sea level, and there's just not a lot of places to escape the, the big tidal waves and things that come in from a, a storm like that. But the, you know, in that storm, there was a, a number of people killed, uh, you know, and of course, uh, relief efforts had to come in to help help with the people that were left homeless. There was about 700 or 70,000 people that were left homeless in the Bahamas because of this storm uh, a few years ago. Of course, the storm didn't just stop there. It continued to brush the U.S. coast and the Outer Banks of North Carolina and threatened a number of uh, areas, to include even the maritime provinces of Canada. So it was still a hurricane at that point. But life, you know, life storms can take other forms. You know, war. I was in Fort Ashby, West Virginia, yesterday doing a reenactment, remembering the French Indian War, a time when. Um, Many on the frontier were at great risk. Their homes were being burned by um, French and Indian raiding parties on the English frontier. You know, captives were being taken. Can you imagine the families that were broken up in that situation? Kids taken to a community that was completely foreign them, to them to be raised. Uh, a number of people were killed in that time. You know, the, the war brings about a lot of storm. Uh, great storm in, in many people's lives in these, these areas of the world. Even today, places like you know Afghanistan and other places in the world where there are ongoing wars, people are affected by these things. None of those people probably woke up at one point expecting that, but then these things, these, these storms come. Of course, sickness and death is another form of storm that can come in our lives. As we've talked about uh, you know, with things like cancer. Um, my my mother died in February 2019, so I've personally experienced the, the heartache and the, the, the trouble that you go through in a situation like that during the storm, that kind of a storm of sickness and death in your life. But I, I'm always taken to heart by the fact that she had six and a half years of uh, fighting that ovarian cancer. So. Just, and she took that as a blessing. She was so happy that she had that additional six and a half years to see my niece grow, my niece Jane, and, and becoming a young lady. So she, you know, sometimes there's storms, sometimes things don't go the way they, they, that we intend them to go, but we also have to see the, the good and the silver lining in these things. Of course, more recently, my wife Rhonda has been dealing with her mom and, and, and all the challenges with her illnesses along the way. And of course, this June, her mother passed away. It had been something in the coming. You know, one, I guess, thing with cancer, at least you have some warning that, that, that this is coming, but it's still hard. But, you know, even through all these situations with sickness and people fighting cancer, um, you know, the, the, the Lord is with us. The Lord is watching out for us. He may not always answer things in the way that we would like it, like it to be answered, but he does watch out for us. Um, from a financial standpoint, I remember when we were young and married and didn't have a lot of money, and, you know, hey, am I going to be able to pay the mortgage this month? Am I going to be able to, am I going to lose my home at some point? Or am I going to be able to pay that water bill or that, you know, electric bill. Uh, things are not always easy sometimes on the financial front. That can be a storm in our life as we negotiate uh, the years. You know, you know, of course, obviously, unexpected car problems can sometimes be a big, big issue. You know, you've got to replace the transmission in your vehicle that you were not really expecting to do uh, or decide whether to get a new car to replace that. 
but uh, you know, the, even the simple things that we have enough to go to the grocery store and get food. But these are all examples of storms in our life, and these storms can have a an effect on us if we let them, if we don't rely on who who we need to rely on, if we don't rely on the Lord. The, uh, the storms can sometimes take various forms, and they can definitely be overwhelming. But you know, regardless of whether that storm is uh, something like a Hurricane Dorian or a personal, you know, storm uh, in our lives, they can bring a great deal of uncertainty and worry as we negotiate these things, these situations. And Job. Uh, chapter 30, verse 15, says, Terrors overwhelm me. My, digni my dignity is driven away as the wind. My safety vanishes like a cloud. In, in such a short time, you know, we can go from a you know, situation of you know, full happiness, you know, contentment, content with our world, to a time of uncertainty. You know, just because of things that are external to us that can act on us, these storms in life. And of course, you know, even just change. I know many of us, you know, work jobs and things change at work. Uh, most people are not happy about change, even just from a simple standpoint. It's not going to cause major problems in your life, but it's just change is never easy. And of course, change of, of a magnitude of a storm, like you know, some of the things we were talking about, can almost seem impossible to bear. But what I ask you to do this morning is, you know, how, how can we, how should we handle these storms in our lives? Well, ultimately we need to remember that grace, that God's grace is sufficient. Remember that, you know, God's grace will cover all these situations and provide you the wisdom that you need to negotiate these, these storms. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9 and 10, it says, But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness, so that Christ's power may, be, may rest on me, that is uh, persecution and difficulty. That, uh, that is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weakness, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Christ provides us that, that strength in our lives as we negotiate these challenges. And he uses these challenges to help us to grow as Christians. Galatians uh, chapter 1, verse 3. Grace and peace to you, to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So just remember that we're in grace and that in that grace he will provide us the peace that we need as we deal with these various issues in our lives. 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 5, uh, verse 28. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. In Revelations uh, chapter 22, verse 21, the grace of the Lord Jesus be with God's people. Amen. Even in the darkest part of the storm in our lives, God is with us. We just have to seek the Lord in those situations. Of course, how do we do that? We, of course, do that with prayer. You know, prayer is our direct line of communication with God. That's the beauty of Jesus Christ and his sacrifice on the cross. He provided us that avenue of direct communication. We can, we can ask him for the things that we you know, or need or the, the things that are troubling us in our life. We can ask for the help in those situations. You know, God's wisdom, God will provide the wisdom that we need to deal with those situations. But just remember, in, in our prayers, we often want them to work out a certain way. But God, again, has 
a long-term plan for us. And we don't always appreciate that what we might want out of that prayer as the result may not be the best result for us. Sometimes God needs to use this situation to teach us to bring us to the next situation that we, that we need to, to handle or the storm that we have to go through. So God is always teaching and, and, and using those moments to, to make us uh, better Christians and to grow. In Jeremiah 42, verse 3, Pray that the Lord, your God, will tell us where we should go and what we should do. So again, we have to pray with an open open mind and an open heart that God will provide us the direction. We can ask for a certain situation you know, to be done a certain way, but ultimately we, we need to let that up to God's will. Because God has the perfect plan for us that's always unfolding and we might not always appreciate at the time or at the, at the moment at hand. James chapter 5 verse 14 Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. So when we are sick, not only can our family pray for us, but corporately our church, our church body. The prayer list is such an important way to do that. But even when we're together in worship, there is an opportunity to come together and lay hands and pray for that individual as they negotiate that storm in their life. So remember to pray and re remember to pray corporately for the, the other people in the church, in the community, and in, even in our world of you know, some of the missions that we support and things that uh, go on around the world. God wants us to keep everybody in, in, in our prayers as we do our daily prayers. Psalm chapter 107 verse 29. He maketh the storm a calm, so make the, make us the storm calm so that the waves thereof are still. So just think about that. God has the ultimate power. He can take the storm and take it from this raging thing that's going on all around us and turn it into a calm situation instantly. God has infinite power and he can do those things. And even if he even if the storm is still going on around us, he can provide us the peace, the inner peace as we negotiate that storm and uh, help us to move through that as we you know, rely on God. From the standpoint of hope, there is always hope in God. You know, He is always there with us and, and providing us that hope that we need to neg negotiate through these storms of life. Psalm chapter 9, verse 18. But God will never forget the needy, the hope of the afflicted will never perish. So God is always remembering those in most need. And likewise, we should do that as well within our communities and helping those around us that we can help, that need help in even something as simple as the day-to-day -day activities. Uh, Rhonda's mom had a neighbor that would just come over and cut the grass. And that is something so simple but Miss Cynthia would come over and cut the grass each, each week to keep the, the but her mom couldn't physically do it anymore. But just remember that we need to do things like that within our, for our neighbors and for those around us, our family that are sick and, and help them as, as we can. Psalm 9, chapter 9, verse 18. Oh, no, sorry. Psalm 30, chapter 33, verse 20. We wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. So the Lord is, is there to protect us. He is there to watch over us. He is there to provide us that strength in our times of need. So remember that, that hope for the Lord as we go through these storms in our life. Psalm uh, chapter 147, verse 11. The Lord delights in those who fear him, who 
put their hope in his unfailing love. We, we need to remember, you know, the Lord and, and remember the unfailing sacrifice that he made for us, that ultimate gift that he provided on the cross of Calvary. It's through that unfailing love that we, we have hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will sorry. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. So with that uh, with our hope in the Lord, he, he will make us soar like eagles. Matthew chapter 12, verse 21. In his name, the nation will put their hope. So we, we need to put our hope in Jesus Christ. We need to, to pray for our nation in the name of Jesus Christ. Pray for the community around us in the name of Jesus Christ. He has done so many things in our lives. We need to continue to pray for those throughout our nation. And that they might also have that same hope that we have in Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 12, verse 12. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. So we have that joy because we have the hope that Christ has provided us. And we sometimes aren't patient with affliction. It's easy to want something to happen sooner than we then it will happen. Um, but we need to be patient in the Lord. All things work out in His timing, not necessarily our timing. And of course, ultimately, we all, all need to be faithful in prayer to Jesus so that we have that conversation, we have that relationship with Jesus in our everyday lives. Chap uh, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. So we hold on to that, what the Lord, the Lord has promised us, he is faithful to that. And we have that hope that uh, he will provide what we need in those storms of our life. Of course, of course there's a few Bible verses to think about from the standpoint of during our storms. Things that, that are going on. Isaiah chapter 4, verse 6. And there shall be a tabernacle for a shadow in the daytime from the heat, and for a place of refuge, and for a co cover from storm and from a cover from storm and from rain. So just you know, think about the being in a place like Israel with, with no cover in the the direct sun, and, and the Lord will help provide that tabernacle of shadow in our in our need to help give us the, the um, peace from the the heat and the affliction around us. Isaiah chapter twenty five verse four: For thou hast been a strength to the poor, a strength to the needy in his distress, a refuge from the storm, a shadow from the heat. When the blast of the terrible one is as a storm against the wall. So in all those situations in our life, the Lord is there for us. All we have to do is ask and, and have that communication, that, that prayer with the Lord. And even corporately with our fellow believers in the church. Luke chapter 8, verses 22 through 24. Now it came to pass on a certain day that he went to a ship with his disciples, and he said unto them, Let us go, go over unto the other side of the lake, and they landed forth. But as they, as they sailed, he fell asleep, and there came down a storm of wind on the lake, and they were filled with water and were in jeopardy. And they came to him and awoke him, saying, Master, Master! We perish. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water, 
and they ceased, and there was calm. So if the Lord has the power to cease this, you know, physical storm on a lake in, in Galilee, he has the power to cease the storms of things going around on around us and to provide us the peace that we need in those situations. So just take heart in, in the fact that these are disciples of Jesus Christ, and even they had doubts at times in their lives. And they were calling upon the Lord, and the Lord responded and, and took care of them. You know, the thing to remember in all of this is Jesus is in control. He will give you the wisdom and peace you need to negotiate these storms. We just have to be you know, prayerful and ask for that, um, that help and that wisdom as we go through those situations. And pray for those, definitely pray for those around us. Lay our hands on those individuals and give them the strength and peace through our corporate love of Jesus Christ. In Numbers uh, chapter 6, verse 26, the Lord turns his face toward you and gives you peace. So just remember that today as, as you think about storms in your life, storms in your friends' lives or family or uh, neighbors, that the Lord will turn his face to you and give you peace. So, at this point, we'll do our prayer of commitment this morning. So let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day to come together and, and worship in your house, Lord. We, we are so blessed to be able to come together and, and pray and hear your word. There are so many places in the world that that's not possible, Lord. But we are blessed to be able to do that here. And Lord, we just ask that you be with those that could be here this morning. People on you know, vacation like the pastor and Shelly, just watch out and protect them but also for other members of the church that are not here this morning because of vacations and family trips. Give them traveling mercies and, and safety as they come and go to do their, their summer vacations, Lord. And Lord, we just um, are thankful for those that could be here this morning in the service and for those that are listening online, Lord. We just ask that uh, you continue to watch out for them and protect them and, and give them the peace as they negotiate through life's storms. I'm so thankful for all that you have done. I'm so thankful, Lord, for that sacrifice on the cross that you made so many years ago. That broken body, that blood that was shed to make our sins white as snow, Lord. Your gift, your free gift, is there for any non-believer. All we have to do as a non-believer is ask Jesus to forgive us of our sins and come into our heart. And we are a new creature. We experience a new birth. And Lord, we just thank you for that opportunity. We know that if it was up to us, we would fail and fall short of your glory. But we know through your free gift, Lord, that you are there and provide us that opportunity to go to heaven and be with you. And Lord, we just ask that you be with us this coming week and, and protect those that we go out into the work world and, and doing the various things that we do. And Lord, give us uh, safety until we can come, again, come together again and worship you as a family of Jesus Christ. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.